Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Her Effect podcast. I'm Jamie Cross, your host here today, and I'm really excited about today's topic. We have not really covered this subject on the podcast yet, so today is a new day of new <laughs> new conversation, um, and today I wanted to talk about marriage, and even more than that, some of the pitfalls and mindsets that people fall into in marriage that can lead, to, like just really, it's a death trap. And um, I wanted to share some stories just about where I've come from. You know, Nathan and I have been married for over 17 years now. In September, it'll be 17 and a half years. <laughs> and we've been through so much. We have fought hard to have what we have today. And so I want to talk a little bit about this idea. I've heard it before, especially coming out of a ministry background where I've spoken and talked to so many couples and so many women, this question of what if I married the wrong person? And first of all, I want to tell you that the enemy is, is powerless. He has been stripped of all of his power, but where he gains traction in our, in our lives is by deceiving us, planting seeds of doubt. And so this idea that maybe I've married the wrong person is strictly a, a lie from the enemy designed to rob you of what God has intended for your future. Now, you know, once you're married, there might be more work for you to do in, in your relationship and in your marriage than some others, but I can promise you that you're in the right relationship and it's going to take work and, and you know that, but I want to encourage you today with some stories and some promises that are just going to bring you life. And the first thing is that one of the very first things that God did, obviously, when he created the entire earth, is he created a, an equal partner for man because God saw that he shouldn't be alone. And so God said, two are better than one. And so that is the design of marriage, is that two are better than one. And I want to talk a little bit about how Nathan and I have learned to operate so that we have peace in our home and joy. And there is so much promise to attain in marriage. And I want to remind you of that, especially if you're struggling right now, if you're maybe in a, in a dark place in your marriage, there is so much hope. And, um, and God wants to see you blossoming as a wife. And so let's just kind of dive in here and talk. Let's, I want to go back to the very beginning of my story and talk about what it was like to be married <laughs> and all of the ideas that I had. I spent my whole life growing up thinking about marriage, thinking about, you know, I couldn't wait for the day that I could be a wife. And and then marrying a man who I'm a very verbal, like verbal affirmation is my primary love language, um, that and quality time. And Nathan is an introvert, a nonverbal introvert. <laughs> and so for probably the first eight to 10 years of our marriage, I deep down in my soul wondered if I was truly loved the way that I saw men love women on, in Hollywood, in the movies, you know? And I think that that is something that we should definitely bring to light because a lot of us, I think, have this sort of perspective that our marriage should be like, you know, a soap opera or, you know, one of the Netflix series we've seen. And and that's just not the case. Now, ultimately, yes, there is this wedded bliss that is there for the taking for all of us. And I know for Nathan and I, we had to work for it and, and learn how to come together. And the things that I used to despise about him when we first got married, the fact that like we would, I would get ready for a date and um, we'd, he'd come like, come to the bedroom and be like, okay, are you ready? And he wouldn't say anything about how I looked. And I thought, man, I just spent the last hour and a half putting all this makeup on or you know, finding a dress. And there was no like, hey, you look beautiful. I didn't get any of that from him. And so I struggled with wondering whether or not like I was seen. I felt so unseen. I felt invisible for a, like the very beginning, for a large part of the, the beginning of our marriage. And What's interesting is now looking back on those times, I think about now how much more I understand Nathan and the layers of who he really is and the kind of dedicated, quiet man he is. I'm so grateful for the, the way that God made him 
And we had to learn how to take like what could have been like this, and it was like this for years, and like make it like this, right? Where you fit together. And step number one is you seek first to understand and serve. And especially as women, I would get really upset and my feelings would get hurt. And um, and I would attack Nathan and I would attack his character and I would come at him viciously because I was so hurt and feeling so unloved. And he would feel disrespected, which is like a man's love language, and it would create this vicious cycle. And so when I started to understand like that my approach to him mattered, and when he began to understand like he had to practice being verbal with me and saying, you look beautiful. And me, you know, like doing the work. And I think where the challenge can really take place is when one spouse doesn't really put in the effort and another spouse is left kind of hanging. And I I think that that has been like an ebb and flow too, where I felt like, man, I'm working on all these things and you're not doing the work. And I can tell you this one thing though, just like I always talk about in business and in anything When you stay committed to your marriage and you stay committed to serving and loving, there is winning on the other side of that. And so Nathan and I had breakthrough after breakthrough over the years by staying like staying committed to our marriage, even though sometimes there were seasons where it was like, man, like this is so hard, you know, and you know, was I supposed to like, this guy is like not, he he's so different than what I thought marriage was going to be like. But now I look at, at who we are together as a couple and I think, oh my goodness, I wouldn't change a single thing. We had to unveil that and discover that through time, through communication. And, you know, I'm not really sure exactly what the questions are, but I'd love to hear your questions about marriage. And I think really what I wanted to get across today is that there's a promise waiting for you And it took time for us, you know, years. And I remember there's a couple of things and I've seen this, I've seen this meme before, but it also starts with you having happiness and joy in your own soul, in your own spirit, apart from your spouse. Like when I learned that Nathan, it wasn't Nathan's job to make me happy, that it wasn't his job to like fulfill me, that it was my job to be a whole person and to like having a husband who loved me was just a great counterpart to just being whole as a person. And so when, when we're sitting down with couples now and we hear a lot of the problems, one of the biggest pieces of advice we give is, you know, focus on your own transformation, focus on abiding in the Holy Spirit, abiding in Christ and let him transform you, and love and commitment will win. And so, first of all, just stay committed to being transformed and to not worry. Like, I was, there was years there where I was so focused on what he wasn't doing, what he wasn't doing for me, what he wasn't doing as a person to be a better whatever, you know. And looking back on that, I think, man, I spent a lot of years being so critical of who he was. No wonder he was, like, shut down. For years, you know, because you've got like your verbal people and then you have your shutdowners. And um, and a lot of times where people get really off balance or really like things start to go really haywire is when you start looking for that fulfillment outside of marriage. When really like the more you focus on Christ, the more you focus on being transformed and serving and loving your spouse, again, you can only win. And if you always assume innocence and assume the best in the other, you know, if you think about it, you would have to have married a really bad person who is who is purposely trying to hurt you. And so when you realize, man, you know, I would have to tell myself that he's not trying to hurt me. I need to be transformed in this area. Maybe there's still triggers from old relationships or you know, like even from family or old hurts things that God wants to restore and redeem in you, um, the best thing you could possibly do is stay committed and become activated in your own person as a whole person. So remember the promise, though, that two are better than one and that God came to give you life. And 
If you're in a situation where marriage is really hard, start to ask the Lord to show you where he wants to bring healing and transformation in your own heart and let that be your focus. Not even the transformation part as much as it's like, Lord, you do your work in me. You complete your work in me. And Father, I'm just going to focus on you. The Bible says that as we behold Jesus, we are transformed into the very image of Christ. And so by, I love to tell the story, and I don't know if I've told it on this podcast, so um, forgive me if this is repeat information, but I remember being early on in ministry and still like struggling through with like marriage and communication stuff. And um, I was struggling with bitterness towards leadership, towards Nathan. And my dad came over one day and he's, and I was like, I'm just trying so hard to not be bitter. And he's like, that's not your responsibility. And I remember being like, what do you mean it's not my responsibility? Of course it's my job to like make sure that I'm not being bitter. He said, your job is to focus on the gardener. You're a tree planted in the garden. A tree just focuses on the gardener. And the gardener comes in and he fertilizes and he prunes and he waters and he does all of these things to ensure that the tree naturally does what it was created to do, which is bear fruit. And so... A lot of times we're trying so hard to be transformed or we're trying so hard to, you know, bear fruit or to be at peace or to have joy or to do all the things that are considered the fruit of the spirit. How do we really take possession of those things? The Bible gives us very clear instructions. Just as you behold him, as you behold Jesus, you are transformed into the very same image. And so as I began to go through scripture and I would see these stories about how God vindicated his people, how he created beauty from ashes, how he made wrongs into rights, how he redeemed his people. I just fell more in love with Christ, with Jesus. And and you want to be in that place of just loving God and beholding his goodness. And Lord, you do your work in me. And he came in and literally um, he came in and removed bitterness supernaturally and restored my soul and restored my spirit over time as I continued to just go deeper in my relationship with the Lord. And so I want to, uh, I'm going to do a whole episode sometime about just spiritual responsibility. If you really want to be a powerhouse in kingdom living, the first, truly one of the first steps is spiritual responsibility. And we're going to talk about that sometime. It's a, it's a lost art in kingdom living. We have a lot of people who are waiting on God to do things for them, or they're praying for things to happen. But truly, like God gave us dominion here on this earth, and we have the authority to go out and take possession of our land and to take possession of what he's laid out for us to have. And so if you're in a marriage and you're fighting for for peace, then Take a step back and begin to just worship and just praise God for who he is and adore him and let him let him come and do his work that he does best, transforming and um and be loving towards your spouse. You know, the Bible's pretty clear instruction. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's a real thing, you know. We have a lot of men, I think, especially in our society, and this is not stereotypical. This is just what I've seen is men who are, they've got like chains on their wives, like they want them at home, having, you know, taking care of the household and being, you know, and so many women are like dying inside. And so if Christ came to set us free and if Jesus said, husband loves your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her then it's the husband's job to set her free, to come alive in the home and in her business and all the things that she feels called to do. There is so much peace in our home because Nathan and I are whole people individually, and I've set him free to be who he is and do what he is called and passionate to do, and he's done the same for me. His motto is like, go, babe. It's that, that way for both of us. Just do your thing, and there's no possessive possessiveness, you know? And there's a lot of peace in that. And then, of course, for wives, submit to your husbands. 
that's a word that we could talk about. You know, I'll do another podcast episode. What does it really mean to submit? But um, it's a heart posture that we need to have towards our husbands and he will feel the shift. And if that's a struggle for you, then again, abide in Christ, let him transform you and have hope that what he's given you is a blessing. Even if it doesn't feel like it right now, there's a, there's a marriage waiting for you that is a promise and a treasure to behold. And all the things right now that you feel like are working against you are probably actually gifts that you guys can be compatible in. All the areas that I used to like look at Nathan and I think, man, we're so different and we're not compatible. And now I think, oh my gosh, thank God we're so different because my yin is to his yang. So keep going. Again, don't give up forever in your corner. We're all in this together and um, stay true to the voice in here that is speaking to you and honor that live a life worthy of the calling you've received